Not Ready, my name's Annette and today I'm talking about sphagnum moss and I'm going to show you how I use it um, or what I use it for and also I'm going to show you how you can propagate it or grow your own if that's something you fancy doing. If you use a lot of it it's a good way to save pennies and we're all trying to do that at the moment. So I thought I'd do a quick video just explaining how to do that. Uh, there are various different ways of doing it but uh, this is the method that I'm going to use that I'll show you today but you can grow your own moss just by collecting it in the garden if you like but sphagnum moss is particular. So I'll tell you what I know about sphagnum moss. So sphagnum moss is the type of moss that likes to be wet when it's growing. So um, it's kind of like frilly and it's not what you call sheet moss. So it's not like tightly packed. You can also get like balls of moss and it's not like that. So sphagnum moss is kind of more fluffy and a lot of florists use it to decorate the tops of pots and I definitely use it for that. So I use it to decorate the top of my tulip pots, just so that I'm not looking at bare soil or grit. And I also use it at this time of year to decorate around the base of my amaryllis bulbs, so that I'm not looking at bare soil or grit there. And it's really pretty in the house. It looks very special um, around the festive season at Christmas to have a bit of moss in your house. And so that's why I like to use sphagnum moss for that. So I'm going to show you how I use a sphagnum moss and then I will show you what I'm going to do to try and grow my own. You can buy your sphagnum moss either dried or fresh. I've always bought it dried. I've never managed to get hold of any fresh sphagnum moss. I have bought sheet moss fresh from my local florist before, but we're talking about sphagnum moss today and I buy mine dried. I order it online. If you want to know which product I ordered, then just have a look in the description below this video and I will list it there so you can take a look if you like. Um, and when it's dried, what you need to do is rehydrate it. So the moss that I order, um, is, it has green in it. It's not dyed, it's completely natural, but it comes sort of semi-fresh, I suppose. It does say it's dried, but it seems to be more green than other brands. So a lot of brands, when you buy it dried, it's very brown. Um, but the one that I choose has, it looks fresher. When you rehydrate your moss, it will really expand. So what you want to do is take a small handful and completely submerge it in water. So it comes in a bag like this and you just take a little bit out and then you'll see that when you put it in water, it really expands. And you have to really, you know, submerge it and soak it. And you can leave it there, you know, 15, 20 minutes. I wouldn't leave it too long. I mean, you want it to go mouldy. So that's one thing you need to be careful with your moss is that you don't want to soak it um, you know, keep it so moist that it goes mouldy. But you want to completely rehydrate it until it becomes lovely and soft and fluffy. And in true cooking show style, I have some that I rehydrated earlier just because obviously we didn't want to have to wait whilst I'm filming this for you. So this is a bowl of moss that I rehydrated earlier and you can see that it's all fluffed up really nicely. It still feels damp, and if you squeeze it, there's no water coming out, but it's completely fluffy. And then you can just use your moss however you like. And what I like to do is I like to put it around my pots. So I'll show you one of my amaryllis. These are amaryllis that I potted up in an earlier video, which you can take a look at on my channel if you want to know how I did that. But then I just go around the outside here and you don't have to be too neat and tidy. And this is another reason why you don't want it to be soaking wet or anything because your amaryllis bulbs don't want to be soaking wet. But then you just sort of make a little nest around the outside. And I just think that that looks so much prettier than bare soil. And so that's what I do. And then I just leave my amaryllis like that and I continue to look after my amaryllis. And I do exactly the same thing with my tulip pots. Um, where I plant my tulips outside and I put moss around the top of those. I mean, I have put sheet moss around the top of those in the past, but I think sphagnum moss looks prettier and it's also a lot easier for the tulips um, to poke up through it because it's all in little bits. Um, whereas the sheet moss, what I found happened one year with the sheet moss is that it was in such big sheets because I hadn't torn it up very much. Um, <laughs> the tulips just lifted the sheet moss in the spring. So it's like this layer suspended on the tulip leaves as they poke through, which I thought was quite funny, but it didn't look particularly good. That's how you rehydrate your dried sphagnum moss. 
and that's literally all there is to it. I should show you what it looks like when it's dry. So when it's dry, it just, it's completely dry, it looks like that. As I said, some um, moss that you can buy just looks really brown, there's no green to it at all. And I just think that doesn't look quite as pretty. So that's why I really like this brand of moss. I've read so many theories about how to propagate moss from its dried state, but this is the method that I'm going to try today. I haven't done this before, but I believe it will work. We're not going to know for a month or two because it does take a long time for the moss to grow. If you're trying to grow sphagnum moss from fresh, I believe it's a different method. You need to use a substrate, um, probably some peat um, compost or something like that. But I'm not doing that today because I have dried sphagnum moss and that's not how we do it. So if you've got dried sphagnum moss, you want to rehydrate it uh, just by putting it in a bowl of water and leaving it there for a while, which is what I did earlier. So what I've done is I've saved some tomato containers. So you could use these and then cover them with cling film or saran wrap or whatever you choose to call it. Um, or you could just use a Tupperware container, um, maybe one you don't mind poking holes in because you want it to have ventilation. I mean, you could just prop the lid open like this and then there'd be some ventilation or you could pierce the top with a skewer, which is probably what I'm going to do um, just in case my cats get to it. Um, so I'm going to try using each. I'm going to try both methods. So I'm going to try um, one with the tomato container and one with the cling film. So I'm just going to poke some holes into the top of my lid here. And you can poke as many or as few as you want, but you want to basically make sure that there's ventilation. If your moss doesn't have ventilation while it's trying to grow, it will go mouldy and you'll get algae growth and you do not want algae growth. That's, that'd be disgusting and slimy and the end of your lovely moss. And then you want to really um, squeeze it out. So you don't want it to be soaking wet. You want it to be moist. So, so long as it still feels moist, then you're okay. And I believe that still feels moist. Now, the other thing that I have read, I actually think it could be a little bit more moist. So we're going to try that again. I'm going to squeeze quite so much out. There we are. It's not dripping, but it is moist. And then I'm just going to spread it out like that. And then I'm going to try a different method and this method, um, people have said that it's easier for the sphagnum moss to grow if you chop it up into small pieces. So that's what I'm going to do with this second tub. And then we can do a comparison and see which one worked best. So again, I'm not going to squeeze out too much water. And it's also going to be a slightly different container because in this one, I'm going to use cling film or saran wrap. And the other one's going to have the lid. But Actually, that should make a minor difference, if any. So can you see how small I'm chopping it up? Apparently small is good. So there we go. And I'm just going to spread it out a bit. And I know it looks like I'm not putting a lot in there, but apparently you don't need a lot because you're trying to grow new stuff. So I'm just going to do it like that. And then all you need to do is put your lid on. Now with this one, I did poke holes in it, but they're more like cracks. So I don't think that's gonna be sufficient. So what I'm going to do is just leave it ajar like that. And then with this one, I'm going to put cling film around it. like that, make it sure so it's nice and tight. And then what you need to do is actually poke some holes in here. And I know that seems counterintuitive, but um, if you don't let any air in and it's a moist, damp environment, it would just go moldy and grow algae and you don't want that. And now I'm going to put these somewhere where it's nice and bright, but not in direct sunlight. I'm literally gonna wait a month or two and see what happens. In fact, what I might do is write the date on the side of the container, just so I remember what date I did this. This is November, so hopefully sometime in January, we should start seeing some growth, maybe before, you never know. Um, 
But I think it's worth a go. And if I can grow moss this way, then I'll just do a big sheet of it next time. And then I won't have to buy so much because I do get through some. So I think that was a really fun little project today. And I've really enjoyed myself. And it's always nice to experiment and see what you can achieve. And I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. <laughs> Don't poke holes in your plastic lids because it will break. <laughs>